A kia ora nō tātou i te tuatahe, ka tukua ki roto i te reo Māori e nei kōrero ōku. E tahi wahanga, hei tirohanga mā tātou i roto i te nei ture. I te tuatahe, kua tukua te hōhunu tanga o te tiriti o Waitangi kia whai waiwai ai i roto i tēnā iwi o tātou rā a Waikato Tainui. Kua tukua te tiriti o Waitangi me tōna upoko tūrua kia whiwhi ringa ringa ai i roto i te mana whakahaere Kua waihanga tia ki rotu i tēnei pire. He hara i te mea, he rā hari tēnei kao, he rā pauri nā te mea te hiara nei roa i te tatari rātau kia whiwhi reo ai rātau mō ngā taonga, he hāngai tonu ana ki o rātau whatumanoa ki o rātau ngākau. Nā reire, tikana tātau kia mihi atu ki te iwi nā rātau te kaupapa nei i poipoi, nā rātau te kaupapa nei i manaki i tō rātau wā. Mā te wā te tiro, pēhe kei rānei ngā uri whakatupu me tā rātou taka, tā rātou poipoi i tēnei kaupapa. O tira mihi no atu tēnei. Ki a rātou i ngā taha ērua i hahau i manaki, ka tahe ka whakatua waitia i tō tātou aroaro i tēnei rā. Nā reira, tēnā tātou katoa. Mr. Chair, there are two aspects to this bill that are very deserving of some focus in the most positive way. The first is the real meat which is given to the concept of co-management. I refer here to the obligation on those statutory authorities to work uh, with the tangata whenua to detail plans that deal with, flora, uh, with uh, plant life, ngahua whenua, the flora and fauna, deal with um, customary practices, not the least of which is fishing, and a host of other things, but it's a genuine attempt to try and build into the machinery of the law some processes where both perspectives can be brought to bear. And that is not easy. And this most certainly will be not the last attempt that is made, and I dare say refinements will take place in this bill in the future. But, sir, Unlike our colleagues from that side of the House, we've got to trust ourselves and we've got to trust the people that we're bequeathing this responsibility to, both physically but uh, in a chronological and a generational sense, that they will want to carry this perspective forward that we can create in our resource management and on those ancestral treasures, as the Waikato refer, them, refer to them as, something larger than ourselves. And that's what's sadly missing in this bleak, impoverished view being given on this side of the House. It's not so much, sir, that they don't believe in themselves, it's that they don't seem to believe in anything. They seem to think that their status will rise, sir, by deriding, attempting to humiliate or belittle, <coughs> belittle those features of identity and the current cultural mix, sir, that represents modern New Zealand society insofar as we're dealing with the implementation of the treaty settlement. And I think that's probably, sir, the most worrying aspect. But we can derive great solace from the fact that they will not be here for long anyhow. And the Waikato Tainui will be here well beyond us and our families as they are a group whose identity is derived from a cosmic metaphor. It is a blend, sir, of the taha wairua and te taha tangata. And, sir, that is what will actually go on to define New Zealand when we celebrate 200 years of the Treaty of Waitangi and well beyond. Not the view reflected in this Prendergastian sort of blast this <laughs> afternoon, sir. And all that is doing is reminding voters that we must never surrender the future of New Zealand's race relations stewardship to such barren minds who have a very narrow and self-serving uh, agenda which is to cause themselves to grow and try and impoverish the rest of us and our zest to hand on something better to our mokopuna, to our children, so these ancestral squabbles can pass by. And that's why, sir, it's a pleasure to stand with our colleagues today and who knows Maybe Waikato Tainui will one day be able to stop the SOEs from privatising that Huntley power station because, sir, they will have the first right of refusal. So this is a great Honourable day.
Mr. Chair.